realizing I was the last guy on the, to try to exit. I took my last breath of air off the carpet and took a dive for the window. Of course, I can't hold my breath for too long. I'm kind of a cold shock coming upon me. So I uh, wiggled out the window myself. And the three of us found ourselves on the clinging to the hull of an upside down vessel. Stability accounts for 35% of vessel losses. The lives of your crew and the welfare of their families depends on the stability of the vessel. This flying bridge which uh, raise that height consideration. A naval architect should develop stability guidance for your vessel and the recommendations should be followed. What we need to do is just make sure that the boat... Most smaller vessels do not have stability books and there is even less room for air in small boats. The stability of your vessel depends on the weight of your loaded vessel pushing it down into the water and buoyancy pushing it out of the water. Your vessel has a center of gravity and a center of buoyancy that can be calculated by a naval architect. Center of gravity is where the total geometric weight of the vessel is centered or concentrated. Its location is raised, lowered, or moved outboard depending on where things are placed. Center of buoyancy is the geometric center of the submerged portion of your vessel. Its location changes as the vessel heals. In addition, the effect of the sea on your vessel causes the center of buoyancy to shift continuously. If your center of gravity shifts much further horizontally than your center of buoyancy, you will capsize. I remember the boat didn't feel right. It felt very, very tippy, if you will. It just felt precariously balanced on this one swell, and there was a cross chop coming across and it slapped the ass end of the boat right about midship and it popped us right off the top and we came down on our side and it popped all the windows out on the port side. The compromise a fisherman seeks is a safe working deck and a vessel that is stable. There are nine steps you can take to increase the operational stability of your vessel. Improper loading will decrease your stability Keep your tanked liquids at correct levels and make sure that fishing gear and fish are properly and securely stowed. Balance load. How many hours do you run on each fuel tank? All sorts of things play into consideration. Don't use ballast tanks as a way to improve the role of your vessel unless it is permitted by stability guidance. The vessel may feel safer under normal conditions, but it could reduce your overall stability due to lowering your freeboard. So we put fuel in the stern and don't load the bow tank in the winter time. You know, we, we don't put any fuel in the bow tank to keep the bow up and the stern down a little bit to even our even. load. Never overload your vessel, no matter how good the fishing or weather. Overloading decreases freeboard and is the cause of many fatalities. Follow your stability guidance and use common sense. All stability is vessel specific. Don't assume you can safely load your vessel like your buddies, even if similar in size and gear type. Slack water or fuel in tanks will decrease stability due to free surface effect. Loose fish in the hold or on deck has the same free surface effect as a liquid. A liquid or a load of fish sloshing across a wide space has the effect of quickly changing the center of gravity from side to side. Any checkers or bin boards, uh, no. We were trying to fill the entire hold in, in one big load of, of herring. As we added, um, the boat would naturally uh, go toward the outboard side because that was the direction in which the boat was listing and, and the boom is um, trying to counteract that but can't completely do so. To prevent sudden changes in gravity, be sure that all gear that can shift is secure. To prevent a sudden shift in fluids or fish in the hold, changes in gravity 
have strong bin boards and checkers. Keep all port and starboard tank pair cross connections closed while underway. Minimize the number of slack tanks. In general, keep just one fuel and one water tank slack. Keep other tanks either empty or pressed up full. Water on deck can be a major source of free surface effect. Be sure that freeing ports are large and can drain water on deck quickly. And make sure that freeing ports and scuppers remain free and unplugged by fish or debris. Even in good weather, a hang-up can cause water on deck that make it difficult to open ports. For your vessel to maintain its full stability, prevent water flowing from one compartment to the next. Water in places where it does not belong reduces reserve buoyancy. Reserve buoyancy is what allows vessels to recover from a severe roll if flooding can be prevented. However, if down flooding occurs through open hatches or doorways, it is more difficult for vessels to recover. They left the aft door open. There was an interior door that was always propped open. These factors combined with also an open hatch allowed a rapid down flooding when she had laid over on her, her right side to the, about three tons of water per second was rushing through those doors. Uh, made it nearly impossible for any crew to escape and once the, the down flooding started it ran through those two doors which were in alignment and then down flooded into the engine room and showed that she sank in, in uh, four to ten minutes. And I would lean more towards the four minute side. It is the responsibility of all crew members to keep watertight doors and hatches closed and dogged and seals in good repair. There should also be a way to secure all hatch covers so a wave cannot carry them away and expose the opening to down flooding. Keep watertight bulkheads watertight to keep water from flowing from one compartment to another. Watertight doors or weathertight doors are essential that they remain shut when the vessel's in foul weather or crossing a bar or, or any unusual circumstance that you need to maintain that watertight envelope because obviously the ship is your island and you need to keep it afloat. High water alarms should be fitted in all watertight spaces. Alarms should be kept free of debris and tested regularly. Consider a regular visual patrol of all spaces for signs of flooding and fire. The rapid accumulation of ice on rigging and structures will raise your center of gravity and can rapidly decrease the stability of your vessel, resulting in a capsize. I woke up all the guys and said, all right, I want everybody up. We're gonna get this ice off here before we get to Cape Chiniac. Then we'll get to Cape Chiniac and take a look at it. We took out baseball bats, crowbars, and beat the ice off. And basically the only place we had ice was on the bow. We had no ice on the gear because we covered, it, covered the gear with tarps. While a possible solution to icing, neither heading further out to sea to seek warmer water or racing into port may be a viable option. Whatever the decision, get crew knocking ice from the vessel immediately. Make sure your freeing ports and scuppers stay free from ice and debris. Slow the vessel down to slow the accumulation of ice. Maneuver the vessel so that it lessens the buildup of ice. Keep close communications with nearby vessels and search and rescue. Prepare survival equipment and prepare for a sudden capsize. If working in waters potentially exposed to icing conditions, position survival gear in sheltered areas. Marine forecast for the waters of the eastern Gulf of Alaska. But one's best alternative is to pay attention to weather reports and avoid icing conditions. When lifting loads, the weight of the load is centered at the top of the boom significantly raising the center of gravity. 
This can act like a large lever and result in capsizing. Do not bring loads fully on deck unless you know that they can be safely landed and your equipment can handle the load. In my opinion, the primary cause of the instability in this case was that we were fishing for herring and prepared to fish and catch herring, but we weren't equipped the way we should have been. What happened um, after the set was made and there was a large uh, bag or net full of fish alongside the boat and ready to start transferring the, the herring into the hold of the boat. The method used was braille and the size of this set and the time duration of that operation led to herring dying in the net, quit adding weight to the bottom of the net. The bag of net is right alongside the boat and that caused increasing weight um, at the time uh, caused the boat to roll. Keep the load as close to the center line of the vessel as possible and keep the lifted load from swinging. Be conservative when lifting loads in rough seas or when the vessel's stability has been compromised and get product and gear low as soon as possible. <laughs> Loads should always be secure. We've had that thing on the side of the boat before, but this felt a little more severe, especially when I know that the bow of the skiff was still centered. It was just the stern that was on the corner. There's a possibility we had some things in the hatch. We, I know we had a net, possibly a few hundred pounds of something down there had tumbled over to the port or the starboard side also. And now it's there. Of course, it's crappy out. We don't want to pull the tarp and the hatch off of which exposing an open hole in big weather to go down and see if there's something that needs moving. It was dangerous out there without, I mean, I was in a float suit and all, but it was dangerous to do all this stuff. I ended up coming in and telling the guys, I can't move it. There was a decision that could have been made. We could have gotten rid of it, shoveled it, get it off the deck. Hindsight now, yeah, get rid of it. It wasn't my $40,000 skiff to be launching. It was the captains. A load that shifts rapidly changes the center of gravity. At sea, power blocks, skiffs, fishing gear, booms and rigging should be kept secure at all times. Secure gear before you think you need to. Over time, vessels change equipment and get altered for other fisheries. Whenever making major changes, consult with a naval architect to ensure that you are not making changes your vessel was not designed to handle. Weight creep can also develop gradually with small additions over time. It's a good idea to keep a log of the additions you make over time. The log should be reviewed periodically by a naval architect to reassess stability and every six to 12 months, get rid of extra gear or equipment no longer needed. Beware of altering vessels for fisheries they were not designed for without consulting a naval architect. Once they reach this magical 2% weight change, and it doesn't have to be an even exchange, it's just 2% overall weight change of the vessel, they really should have their stability reevaluated. Fishing gear can get hung up on the bottom and cause the vessel to capsize. Will you take precautions for a hanging up situation? Keep knives handy to cut away gear. And when appropriate, use rigging that will break away before a capsize. Try to stay clear of large kelp patches which can catch stabilizers or birds and cause a vessel to heal and down flood another reason to keep doors and hatches secure. For vessels that cannot use breakaway gear, have a means to rapidly release winch brakes or clutches, or be able to cut cables. You would have uh, winches where you, put, with, where you could control the tension, and uh, above a certain level, the winches would automatically release the uh, cable and uh, allow the boat to move.
The seamanship of the helmsman is of vital importance in heavy weather. Especially if stability is being compromised, make sure your most experienced person is at the helm. A good helmsman can anticipate and respond to seas more effectively than an autopilot. In heavy seas, slow down to reduce damage to windows and reduce icing if present. Beware of following seas. They may be more comfortable, but they are more challenging for stability. Rough following seas can result in broaching and capsizing and should concern anyone at the helm. Quartering seas are even more hazardous. Trying to keep our stern into the swells was causing us to get a little more and more off course. And I realized that we were gonna need to drive in order to stay the course. We were gonna have to drive a little more starboard, which was going to present us a little more broadside to the weather, which I knew was dangerous. If seas are extreme, keep the vessel's bow into or quartering into the seas to minimize water on deck and vessel motion. The use of a sea anchor is an excellent way to keep the bow into seas if you lose propulsion or steering. Secure doors and hatches to prevent flooding. Anticipate worsening weather and make efforts to improve stability before weather strikes. There's quite a few things that I learned at that time. First and foremost, it says storm warning. Stay, stay at port, don't go. It's not worth it. Secure gear in anticipation of heavy seas. Avoid pumping from full tanks to empty tanks, which will increase free surface effect or moving loads to correct a list without knowing the cause. This has resulted in many capsizings. Put your most experienced helmsman on the wheel in heavy weather. When acquiring a new vessel, ask to have your stability guidelines explained by a naval architect. Basically the same trim in the boat that you started out with. Be sure to review these guidelines and when entering a new fishery or substantially modifying your vessel, have your guidelines updated. Capsizing is one of the consequences of poor operations that can affect stability. The nine areas of operational stability include always load your vessel within the stability guidelines of your vessel. Avoid having loose fluids or loose fish on your vessel that can quickly change your center of gravity. Keep water out of your vessel by the use of properly maintained and closed watertight doors, hatches, and bulkheads. Avoid weather that can produce icing conditions and when you can't, work at preventing icing from building up. When lifting a load, keep it as close to the center line as possible and keep it from swinging. Make sure that loads cannot shift with strong bin boards and well-secured gear. Log the additional weight of gear and alterations and consult with naval architects about their effects on stability. In case gear hangs up, be sure to have a way to quickly cut gear free or release wenches. Heavy seas present an increasingly dynamic challenge to your vessel's stability. Finally, even a vessel with updated stability guidance will only be as safe as how it is operated by the crew. Ensure that all crew members understand these procedures and follow them. The lives of the crew and the welfare of their families depend on it. It's a constant dynamic force with stability. Their center of gravity is constantly changing as they add fish, burn fuel, use water, and the weights are shifting fore and aft. They have constant changes in the way the vessel rides. Trying to keep a safe boat, it should be pretty easy if you've been on the water a while, but you get careless and you get maybe you just don't think about some things. It is serious though when you get out there to, to see how bad Mother Nature wants to stir the pot. You better hope that you're at the top of your game with your safety and how your vessel operates.